Hello and welcome to today's episode of Socially Distant Discover Nature. This week it's all about baby birds, but first off we'll start with a catch up. Following on from last week's butterfly theme, Naomi has sent in this photograph of a large white butterfly. And also here she's got a hoverfly having a snack. Glenn has been out photographing various insects, including this bumblebee, which is a buff-tail bumblebee, I think. Two yellow stripes, kind of dark yellow stripes, and a kind of beige-ish tail. We also did a bit of tracking and managed to locate this rather striking grasshopper. Unfortunately, it's got the really boring name of common green grasshopper, but that doesn't stop it being any less beautiful. So now let's get on to today's topic, which is baby birds. When I say baby birds, in this episode I'm actually talking about fledglings. So these are baby birds that have grown up enough to have left the nest. So they're going to be fully feathered. We're not talking about those little weird kind of dinosaur, lizardy, ugly, cutie things that you sometimes find abandoned on the lawn or that the cat brings in, any of that. These are fully feathered birds. These fledglings may, however, have left the nest before they can fully fly. And this can cause some concern if you see one on your lawn in the local park. But if they are fully feathered, chances are they're going to be okay. So if you are concerned, back off a bit, just watch them and see. Because the parents will continue to feed them for some weeks after they've fledged officially. So just see if any parent birds comes in and feeds and they're going to be okay. Now, you might think this episode is just an excuse to coo over baby birds with no factual information whatsoever, and you'd be absolutely right, so let's crack on. Actually, having said that, there is a reason we're looking at the fledglings, and it's because they have a slightly different plumage to the adults, so this can cause some confusion when it comes to identifying the local birds. Suddenly, you've got all these new variants, which are a little bit odd. So we'll go through a few examples of how you can tell them apart from the adults, but still recognise the species. One of the best examples of juveniles that look different to the adults is your robin. So everyone knows the robin from Christmas cards and seeing it in real life, it's got that incredible kind of orange-red breast. The juveniles, very different colour. They're kind of brown and speckly, although you can still recognise them as robins, even if they haven't got their fully developed tail, because they've got that classic robin shape, classic robin silhouette, which is kind of puffed up, confident, I'm a robin, bring it on. But why do birds like juvenile robins look different from the adults? Well, there are two main reasons. The first is avoiding predators. So the young birds, these fledglings, are just starting out. They're not familiar necessarily or good at evading all the threats in the world. So it pays for them to be more camouflaged. So they've got these muted browns or just kind of duller colours compared to the adult, which makes them less obvious to spot from a, from a predator like a sparrowhawk or Tiddles the cat. The other main reason is to avoid aggression from adult birds. This is another one best illustrated by the robin. So you might have heard robins are quite territorial. The males will drive away other robins. They will sometimes fight the deaf. They will go after other male robins and the sign that triggers the aggression is that orangey red breast. There's even been reports of robins attacking just orangey red things in the environment, be it, um, I don't know, a wooden post to someone's beard. The juvenile robin can avoid all this aggravation by not having that red breast. Therefore, all those testosterone pumped up male robins will just completely ignore it. Now we'll move on to blue tits. So the juvenile blue tits look very similar in pattern to the adults, but they have much duller, more muted colours. They're also a lot more yellow, and it's like someone has taken all those white patches of the blue tits and coloured them in 
yellow. Talking about blue tits, this brings me on to an interesting question I was asked by Emma recently, which is, where have all the birds gone in my garden? Why aren't they visiting the feeders anymore? One of the reasons could be molting. As you can see in this footage, there is a really scruffy looking adult blue tit. Its feathers have been worn over the breeding season. It's in a bit of a state. After the breeding season is over, the adults will molt their feathers, throwing new feathers to get back into their pristine plumage. While molting takes place, they are more vulnerable to predators because potentially Due to the molting arrangement of the feathers, they might not be able to take flight as readily, or be as evasive, or gliding. They're just at a little bit of a disadvantage, so they will remain discreet and hidden. They might not come to the exposed bird feeders as much, there's more risk there. They might be seeking alternate sources of food in a more sheltered area. On to great tits. Like the blue tits, the juvenile great tits look similar in pattern to the adults but they've got more muted colours and again someone has got their yellow crayon and coloured in all those white patches. Next I'd like to highlight the long tail tip mainly because they are absolutely super cute. Naomi sent in this photograph of a juvenile long tail tit. Now we can tell it's juvenile because it has this dark mask on its head. So there's the dark coloration on the forehead, around the eyes, the side of the face, like it's getting ready to rob a stagecoach in the 1700s. Naomi sent in some more amazing pictures of long tailed tits on the feeders and just posing because they know that they're absolutely gorgeous. She reckons they could be juveniles and Although they don't have the juvenile plumage, we can't rule it out because according to the BTO, within three weeks of leaving the nest, those fledgling long-tailed tits will have taken on, molted, and got the adult plumage, more or less. And that brings us to the end of the section on baby fledgling birds and to the end of the episode. I hope you've enjoyed cooing along with me to all the little cute fluffy birdies. Thank you very much for watching. Next week we are on with some more identification and this is the difference between beetles and bugs, true bugs. So, come back for that. In the meantime, thanks for watching and take care.